Welcome to Conversations with your host, Ron Bryant, who will engage in lively and informative dialogue with politicians, leaders, visiting celebrities, and individuals making a difference in the community fabric of Central Ohio. On this edition of Conversations, I'll be speaking with Tasha Booker, Vice President and Executive Director of City Year Columbus. Tasha serves as the primary leader, internal manager, strategist, and external champion of the organization. Here's my conversation with Tasha Booker and City Year Columbus. Tasha, thank you so very much. We go so far back. It's it's just wonderful. I know I can. Was the first time we Mm -hmm. had the opportunity to chit chat and look, you're elevated to this point, <laughs> Executive Director of City Year AmeriCorps. Just talk about those early days that I know I can and how it developed you to get to this point. Yeah, I loved my time, Ron, um, at I Know I Can. It really prepared me to work with people in the district, get to know the community, um, you know, meet some some donors, some great advocates for education that I might not have otherwise had the opportunity to meet. Uh, it just, it, I mean, I really attributed uh, my time to I Know I Can and United Way. Yes. We didn't have a chance to, right. to, to meet when I was at United Way, but definitely prepared me for a time such as this here at City Year. Who That's knew? Grand. That's great. <laughs> now talk about your background. You're a product a product mm-hmm. of Columbus City Schools, mm-hmm. and you matriculated all the way through to this point. Just talk about that. Yeah, so I uh, graduated from Columbus City Schools, uh, started at um, Hubbard Elementary School in the short north before it was chic, oh, 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 <laughs> so before it was right. the short north that we okay. we see yeah, today. As we know today yeah. And um, you know, matriculated all the way through, graduated from Fort Hayes uh, High School. My okay. home school was Mifflin. I went there for two years. I'm a proud uh, cow puncher. Um, so it's just, it, it, you know, it just really, um, it, it, the work that we're doing here is really heartfelt because uh, there are so much good happening in the district. Good people, good stock come from Columbus City Schools. And so I'm proud to be in this role. And, and when you take a look at it, you have the opportunity to reflect because you know where mm-hmm. you came from, mm-hmm. which is a blessing to know where you're going and mm-hmm. where you're going to take City Year. Talk about City Year as it is today, because I've been following City Year for for it seems like forever when mm-hmm. Priscilla first came into, uh, they pulled her from the bank and she was the first executive director. Yes, she was. And uh, that's even before it was AmeriCorps, mm-hmm. essentially. Uh, so so just talk about where we are today. So yeah, so Priscilla Tyson, she is still a great advocate and friend of, of City Year, but City Year uh, Columbus was started in 1994 uh, and under Priscilla and was really bought here to kind of help fill the gaps in the community with service. And so um, it was really a, a model program for engaging young adults uh, to give back in the community. So you would see a city year uh, working in local nonprofits, helping to fill some some uh, human resource um, gaps that existed, playground builds, um, graffiti removal, yes. um, after school programming was was huge uh, back then. Yeah. Uh, so we were already working in the school schoolhouse space, um, but. What we found um, across the city year pipeline in our 25 sites is that majority of our AmeriCorps um, members were working in schools. Okay. And where there was greatest need in the community was providing um, human capital in the schoolhouse space. That is so important. It is, yeah. it is, especially in today's educational climate uh, across the country. So where we are today, we are solely focused on providing supports in Columbus City Schools. So our 44 AmeriCorps are serving in four Columbus City Schools, Lyndon McKinley STEM Academy, South, Livingston Elementary School, and Mifflin. There you go. Yeah. All so. right, all right. So you're building democracy through citizen service, Mm -hmm. civic leadership, and most importantly, social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. That's your mission. Just stretch that out a little bit. Yeah, so our work is twofold. So we're developing these young 17 to 24 year old uh, core members to really go into the work to the you know workforce. Mm-hmm. Um, most of them are college educated. Um, some are have graduate degrees already who have committed to a year of service uh, giving back to our school. So we're really helping to develop one the workforce pipeline as well as the teacher pipeline across the city year network about 23 percent 
of our AmeriCorps uh, graduates um, will make the decision to go into education in some sort. Uh, we also help them develop creative thinking skills, professional development. Now that is important, mm -hmm. quite important. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. And we also develop some of the soft skills that employers are saying that are missing in our young adults when they enter into the to the work workforce. So mm -hmm. team collaboration, uh, uh, problem solving. Uh, you, we know the statistics. It's a myriad of things. It's just a myriad a myriad of things. I mean, you know, young adults are hired for their technical and knowledge skills, but they're fired for their lack of social emotional <laughs> skills. And so City right, Year right. Uh, is really helping to develop our core in that capacity. And then from the other standpoint, again, I go back to what we're doing in the schools, serving as mentors, role models, and tutors to our, you know, our, our young students. Right. And that's very important as well. Yeah. yeah. The whole child the whole school. Mm -hmm. That is so important. That's your model. That's our Just model. expand upon that. So our model is that we support the entire school with a focus on some of the students that are struggling the most. So for whole school, we're doing everything from community rallies, parent engagement, after school um, tutoring space that we open up to the entire school. Um, one great model is out at Lyndon McKinley STEM Academy. Um, over the Halloween, um, we had parents involved coming out and doing this uh, event called the uh, Mad Math, yes. and it was a trick or treat for families. But okay. the students actually had to solve math problems in order to get their treats. So it's just a way, right, a way to make learning <laughs> true fun. Tricks. Yeah, true <laughs> tricks, right? The trick is really on you. Um, so we're providing those kind of um, school environment, school climate uh, supports that is needed. That administrators and teachers sometimes don't always have an opportunity. Their their day is, is you know begins so early and can end so late and um, they're providing additional supports to help fill those gaps. And then when it comes to the to the whole child, it's really helping that student uh, really get back on track. So we're working with students who may have fallen off track somewhere in their educational career, yeah. and we're supporting them in their uh, English language arts uh, and math, which we know are, are critical uh, to, to graduation right. um, and to the success, the, to their success in the future. Now taking a look at that, those high target, high target need mm -hmm. students, uh, um, and, and the high target schools that works hand in hand with the the whole thought form that that we have with City Year. Mm -hmm. So the work that we do was really based upon a study by Johns Hopkins University that they found that if students uh, there were early warning indicators we call EWIs that if students were struggling uh, in behavior so behavior issues suspensions attendance not coming to school failure course failure in English and in math and or um, math that they were on a trajectory to dropping out and it's during those critical transition points between sixth and ninth grade that Johns Hopkins uh, research found where the top, where the opportunities where students um, would decide to drop out. So the, the thought of dropping out actually happens in the middle school space between sixth and eighth grade, but the action doesn't happen until about ninth and tenth grade, making it a high school dropout issue. More than a million Americans are living with HIV but nearly two thirds do not get the care they need to stay healthy. And transmissions from those not getting care account for nine in 10 new HIV infections. Diagnosis and care can improve the lives of people with HIV and reduce the likelihood of transmitting the virus to others. A hundred people who don't know they have HIV transmit the virus to nearly seven new people each year. But that rate drops rapidly as people go through care. Every year, 100 people who have HIV under control through medication infect less than one. But today, just 30% have the virus under control, and 50,000 people become newly infected each year. Improving the health of people living with HIV today could prevent the vast majority of new infections tomorrow. I'm only 17. But I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. 
a whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family, the first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend. harnessing the power of young people. And these are urban kids. These are urban kids. That's important. Mm -hmm. It is, and so you're taking our AmeriCorps who uh, come from all walks of life, all socioeconomic backgrounds around a common theme, and that is serving the urban core, which are our students within the public school systems that often don't have the same resources as some of our suburban or highly, char you know, highly supported charter schools, and providing kind of the social emotional support that may be missing, the academic support, and, and just that, that near peer support. They're, they're old enough to be considered adults, but young enough that they can relate to our students. That's why the social emotional is so important. Mm -hmm. Talk about AmeriCorps mm -hmm. and you know, how AmeriCorps got involved in City Year to where it is today. So uh, we actually, City Year, actually is a model for AmeriCorps. The federal AmeriCorps program uh, under President, uh, former President Bill Clinton uh, started the AmeriCorps uh, program after city year. So in 1988, Michael Brown, our founder, who's in, out of Boston, a graduate from Harvard, uh, had this great idea that young adults, again, 17 to 24 year olds, could help fill the gaps of some of our um, serious right. issues in our country. So uh, in the early 90s, President Clinton, you know, uh, uh, came and toured some of the city, the first city year location in Boston, and just loved the idea and wrote billions of dollars into the budget to support the federal AmeriCorps uh, program. And so we are able to do our work through, um, through the AmeriCorps program. So we are an AmeriCorps program. Excellent. Now, now former President Clinton was always very high on community service right. and giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And that just turned right around and made that very strong for City Year. Absolutely, and City Year is the the largest AmeriCorps, federal AmeriCorps program. Okay. So through the Corporation for National uh, Community Service, um, we receive significant financial support and just the, the support that we need to be able to do this work in the, in the schools. Talk about the routine. You have a daily routine, or at least the students, the members of City Year have a daily routine. Talk about that routine and, and, and what that's all about. Sure, so our AmeriCorps starts sometimes before we've had our first <laughs> cup of coffee, uh, especially at the high school level. They are there first thing in the morning uh, doing what we call a power greeting. They're there to greet students, get them ready for the, ready and excited for the day. And you know, I invite you to come out one day to, to actually see that, that power greeting. And we are there, we are working with students first thing in the morning sometimes uh, during homeroom. How early? Uh, oh, I mean, some of the days start at 6.45, 6.30, right? My. Some of us are still hitting the snooze button <laughs> at that hour. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But they are there and they, they, leave, they don't leave until you know, sometimes very late in the evening as we're doing some of the after school um, supports and, and, and programs. But their day consists of um, pulling out students from classrooms to work one on one with them on their core subject. Again, math and English being our focus. Um, if students aren't coming into school, um, our AmeriCorps are actually going out with, with um, staff and school personnel to bring students to school. I was not aware of that. So yeah. they, they really are working to keep the students focused. Keep them focused, get them on track so that they can graduate on time and they can't be on track if they're not in school. And you would be surprised at me some of the reasons why students just aren't at school. It's not because they don't like school, they don't enjoy school, but you know sometimes the, their responsibilities at home outweigh uh, what they need to be doing uh, in school unfortunately. So, but yeah, so our students, you know, they are AmeriCorps, excuse me, start first thing in the morning, one-on-one -on -one supports. Uh, they are working in tandem with principals and teachers, uh, really identifying those most at risk um, and who those who need our help uh, the most. So, I mean, their day sometimes it's 12, 14 hour days. 
From a, from, a, from a city or perspective, where do you see education going as we move into the future? So city year across the network and here locally, we work in partnership. We're not the answer. Uh, we are part of the solution. Um, and so, you know, it's my vision that we'll have a city year and in, in hopefully in all of our schools, um, but where we're needed the most. City year definitely responds to where the district um, needs us the most. And so uh, we hope to, uh, we have a long-term impact strategy that over the next 10 years we're going to grow from 44 core today to 213 serving in 23 of um, Columbus City's you know most yeah. you know vulnerable schools um, and that you know we are truly a school turnaround seen as a school turnaround partner uh, with the district so you're looking for growth how does one become a member of City Year? Is there a recruitment process? Do we fill out uh, uh, applications and say, can, 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 I, can I get in? Yeah. <laughs> I am so glad that you asked that. Yes, City Year and AmeriCorps, we actually recruit. And we are actually in that process now to recruit for 64 AmeriCorps next year. Um, so they can go to www.cityyear.org um, to find out how they can become um, you know, an AmeriCorps, excuse me, a City Year AmeriCorps member, but we recruit. We're on uh, pretty much all of Ohio campuses around town, uh, around locally, and um, in our in our region. Uh, we have recruiters that are right here that reach out to to our Good. students. We also take uh, high school uh, graduates too, uh, who are kind of going through that gap year, so that okay. year between okay. graduation and and college. Since the Affordable Care Act was signed into law in 2010, 28 states plus DC have expanded Medicaid, and millions have gained coverage through Medicaid or CHIP. Millions of young adults have gained coverage through their parents' plan. Americans saved $9 billion because insurance companies must spend at least 80 cents of every premium dollar on health care. 9.4 million seniors and people with disabilities saved more than $15 billion on prescription drugs. Nearly $1,600 per beneficiary. Nearly 11.7 million Americans are signed up for coverage through the health insurance marketplace. The ACA has helped achieve an historic reduction in the uninsured. To date, 16.4 million uninsured people have gained health care coverage. The Affordable Care Act. Five years of providing access to affordable, quality health coverage. You have a number of supporters organizationally. PepsiCo, mm -hmm. Microsoft, uh, Cisco, mm -hmm. Comcast, Comcast, NBC I Universal. Know, know. Talk about those partnerships. So those are our national partnerships who they have committed to either a large team sponsors, which is a team of 10 in, in particular schools, uh, but those sponsors actually sponsor us on a national level. And so what happens is they provide um, much needed financial uh, and in-kind support um, to us on a national level to get our, our name out there. But here locally, we have some great supporters. You know, uh, JP Morgan Chase here sponsors a, a team out at Mifflin, a CSX, the transportation company, yes. uh, sponsoring us out at. Um, 
at Linden. So I'm mean, great supporters and the list goes on um, in, in the folks that and organizations that continue to support us. Columbus is a very giving community and they understand education. So do you have a development wing or, or is, how's that work? Yeah, so we, uh, we do have a development person here. Uh, she's actually scheduled to start December 15th. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was a position that, you know, um, have been vacant um, for a while and we are just fortunate that there's some great local talent here and we were able to, to find someone that we think is going to help us m help move our long-term impact strategy forward. In your heart of hearts, if you could have everything you want, of course, <laughs> but some of the key things, name three key things in your heart of hearts that you would like to have and or see for City Year. So I would love, you know, philanthropy and giving and financial support is always at the top of the list. I mean, we can't do this work without the giving power of our community and, and the support. Uh, I, I often think if money wasn't an issue, how much we could get done. We didn't yes. have to think about money, thinking about the impact we could have in the in the lives of our student, uh, but that we have uh, champions and advocates, continued champions and advocates, uh, and, and organizations and people who put their stake in the ground for education and want to 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 partner with City Year to to make a difference. Um, and and then I, I want to have a waiting list of young, um, giving and caring adults who want to give back to the community. The alumni, City Year alumni, for those to come back, uh, just name a couple, three who um, you see right at the top of that list as well. <laughs> so it's it, uh, one of my, um, it was actually my predecessor's predecessor, Lord, uh, Lourdes Barroso de Padilla. Um, she was the City Year Executive Director. She is 20 years in. Um, we, I just connected with U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown's uh, daughter, Liz Brown, Excellent. Um, who's a core, and Jason Smith, who is the uh, Deputy Chief of Staff uh, for Columbus City Schools, and I'm actually scheduled to meet with him tomorrow. Grand, so, and he's a, he's an alum. So, their city year alumni go off to do great and wonderful things. So, so it works. It works. It, it works. works. If you were to uh, be talking to parents, um, youth in mm -hmm. the schools, doing your presentation, what are three of the key factors that you would call upon? to have them understand what it's what it's what is needed and what is necessary to become a member of city year what would those be so to become a member of city year you need commitment and it's you know coming to to work every day that you understand you're standing in the gap for a lot of the a lot of our students um, hard work this is hard in this space for just a, a myriad of reasons uh, you know some of the the kids who need our support the most tell us in the most unloving ways um, and, and you know and that can be that can be challenging um, and then just um, you know, a heart to serve, because this is service. It's not volunteer work, this is service. Uh, and, and you have to be, you know, ready for what service entails. Now, I, I noticed some of the gear um, that's uh, in, in the background. Yeah. Talk about that gear, because, you know, th th that looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So. For us, the City Year uniform really represents the best of City Year. It helps uh, students understand that, that service is serious, and we don't want, you know, clothing to be what stands between us uh, and developing a relationship with you. So our, there's our famous red City Year jacket. That's what we are most known for. People say, I love City Year, and it's because they, they see those red coats. Uh, in there, and so you know that's that's some of our gear that we wear. Our core members wear that every day into the schools, uh, so that we're easily identified. Absolutely, uh, it shows professionalism, um, and and it is also the what's been modeled. Uh, in, in schools now, you're starting to see the district really um, take some turns, uh, turns as it relates to uniform. Some of the schools, uh, South in particular, is now a uniform school. I was not aware of that. Yeah, okay. they're a uniform school now, and so we're fitting right into the into the school culture. So, and some of our T-shirts. I mean, we have people who don't know what City Year actually does. They want that red jacket. So, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Two yeah. X here. Two X. Okay, I'll get you one, Ron. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're simply beautiful. Oh, so, thank you, Ron. Uh, in closing, um, just tell us 
um, give us two or three gems as it relates to City Year, and and we'll just close with that. Yeah. Let, 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 let that be the walking note, so to speak. City Year works. That's that's the first gem. We know we have data that supports that this kind of model where we're serving as mentors and coaches, uh, and, you know, tutors, it works in the schools. And um, gems is just, again, it goes back to the core that you really, when you look at to the eyes of those 17 and 20, through 24 year old adults, they understand that what they are doing is making an impact and they take it seriously. Wonderful. We want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Love you, sweetie. Love you.